Hello everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror Investigator Guide for new players. Today we're going to be talking about Ursula Downs, the Explorer. She likes to walk, she likes to get clues, and she likes to do it at the exact same time. Uh, if this is your first time seeing one of these videos, uh, Travis, or is it, I think Travis or Brynn, it's either one of them could have made the deck for this. Um, yeah, I think it's the one that Brynn did most of, because he's I, actually I, played I, here and I haven't. I think that's a, that's a, that's, that was my guess as well. Um, but we have a deck consisting of two course, uh, course sets and the entire cycle in which she came. Uh, if you only have one copy of the course set, we recommend picking up another one or proxying the cards you don't have. Having two of each card will make you win more. Uh, it'll just make your deck more consistent and consistency is good. Uh, in addition as well, if you're a new player, you might have heard something called the taboo list. Uh, don't play with it for your first few times. Just play with the cards as printed. Uh, I think there's only one card in this that cares about that but it does he is yep. he's very strong without it and still strong with it but we're not worrying about that and lastly <laughs> before we get to the card itself i'm trying to get through this intro as quick as possible uh we have some people asking about the uh when we're going to get to the Innsmouth conspiracy investigators we are going to get to them when the cycle all the player cards have been released because if we're going to give you right now it's a core set uh it's two core sets and just <laughs> yeah. the deluxe box which is not going to make you a good deck we're going to wait yeah, till the whole thing's released and then you can start kicking ass with all those cards. We well, actually probably make it a fine deck, but you wouldn't have any upgrade options, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'd be like, you get to have Leo if you're Trish. Have fun. <laughs> um, Bryn, you played Ursula Downs the most. Why don't you talk about her, uh, her weakness, and the card that commits for two okay. book in her deck? Yeah, yeah, so... <laughs> we've, got this, uh, we've got this card that commits for two book in our deck as our signature asset. It's kind of weak not the worst one in the game but close uh you might look at it and say but Bryn, this is a three costed ally that soaks three and two and very rarely is it ever that it's when you that it's that if you're dying i guess mm -hmm. but uh his effect kind of doesn't do anything and we don't want to pay three resources for it when we could have a better ally mm -hmm. uh, our weakness is Sorry, go ahead. There are two much better allies in this oh, deck yeah. list than Jake Williams. Like, Jake Williams <laughs> is basically, like, just, he's a perception. You can play him, but you have much better options that we'll get to yeah. when we get to this list. He's really good at feeding snakes. Yes. <laughs> he is really good at feeding <laughs> snakes. Um, yeah, that being said, if you're playing solo, his effect becomes much more powerful. But mm. you're probably not. Uh our weakness, uh, the worst part about it is that if, so when you draw it, you put it into play in your threat area, it doesn't do anything immediately. At the beginning of your turn, you have to pick a location that is not the location you are currently on. And then at the end of your turn, if you have not successfully investigated that location, you take two horror and shuffle Call of the Unknown back into your deck. Uh, so the worst part about it is that you can never actually get rid of it. You can just keep trying to offset it every turn and like not take the two horror. Uh, that being said, if there is only one location in play, you will never take horror because there is not a location you can choose that you will not successefully investigate. Yeah, like if you draw some turn one yeah. in the gathering, you're set. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to deal with it right away. It doesn't actually do anything yet. Mm -hmm. um, it, is it, it is also more of an annoyance than like... Yeah. A lot uh, of other weaknesses. Because let's uh, let's talk about uh, Ursula's ability and why it's not always a terrible thing. Sometimes you can take advantage of it. Well, so, it's like always a bad thing, but it's just easily mitigated. Yeah. yeah. It's not like Baron Sanity where it actually has, it does good thing, positive things for you sometimes. It's just not always bad. Yeah. So after she moves to location, you can take an investigate action, limit once per round. So if you choose a location with Call of the Known, for example, that's right next to the location you're in, you can move to it, investigate it with your reaction ability on your investigator card, then everything's A-OK. -okay. Her star effect is also after this test ends, you may move to a connecting location. And her stat line is pretty beefy. Like, yeah. her stat line no, it, is, it like is chef's kiss. Yeah, it's, it's what you want. Like, she's, that's great. That's a strong stat line. It is. Uh, yeah, like that. Uh, so a lot of the time I find when I get down into close to the end of a scenario, Call of the Unknown becomes something that I'm very afraid of because like, I can't afford to spend an action investigating a location that I don't need to anymore. 
but also like if i just take the two i shuffle it back into like you know the nine or five cards that are left in my deck yeah and like i'm probably just gonna find it again <laughs> so it can yeah. often end up chalking you for like you know four horror which is kind of a big deal when you only have seven yeah but we do have some plans in this deck to mitigate that a bit too so yeah like jake williams why don't we stay like sometimes jake, jake. <laughs> <laughs> uh why don't we talk about the cards from the core set first that are included in this deck list uh we'll go over these pretty quick because uh they're all pretty standard flashlight helps you get clues better mm -hmm. it's like a three perception that you can use it just takes yeah. up a hand slot. nearly all these cards justin Pardon? yeah <laughs> that's, that's actually all of these there. cards yeah yeah uh, worth noting on the flashlight the action on the flashlight is an investigate action so when you move into a location you can use your reaction ability to take that one for free yeah fancy uh magnifying glass gives you more book more book means easier to get clue more easier to get clue means i win quicker but only while getting clues only while getting clues it's true dr Milan christopher on the other hand always gives you one book and after yeah. you successfully investigate, you gain one resource. He's going to pay himself back and then some. How much action efficiency is that? You get to move to a location, investigate it for free, and get a money for free? Like, that's, that's amazing. Like, that's, that's like, like three-ish. Yeah, yeah like that's, like three, that's like two and a half actions for just walking somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good uh, deal. Hyper-awareness is something you can use your excess resources to get more book or foot. Uh just uh it's yeah. also one of those cards that's very easy for you to upgrade out of your deck when you start going as well mm -hmm. i've noticed there's some yeah. comments of people asking like what should i take out of my deck something like hyper awareness is pretty easy to just low impact be like see ya and get something yeah else. like if you're playing the game and you just have cards that sit in your hand and, and you never play or that you're always committing for symbols that aren't skills uh maybe those should go yes yeah uh, emergency cash gives you money to play some money. of your uh, relics that you're going to have and uh, other things as well. Uh, and deduction is great. It gives you more clue if you succeed while yeah. investigating, which you probably will because it makes you uh, investigate at five. All right. Let's get to the fun stuff, the actual relics in the set. Just kidding. Nope. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I got me too. Uh, manual dexterity, perception, uh, bumps up the stats that uh, are high for her and the stats she'll be using more most often. And then unexpected courage is here to uh, bump up anything else or be a guts for treachery cards. Yeah, yeah so it's just an investigator guide. We always have to talk about guts, but the reason the guts isn't in this deck, if I remember correctly, is because you're probably playing the Forgotten Age if you're playing with just these cards and the core sets. Um, so, and when Brandon and I are making this deck, I think that we deduced that making foot tests was, like, a lot more important than making brain tests. Oh, yeah. Uh, playing playing the Forgotten Age, there are, the game throws a little bit more varied tests at you out of the deck. Mm -hmm. So the Unexpected Courage does a better job of protecting you from it. Plus, you also have three, and Tooth of Etsli is the best relic in those sets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which we'll get to in a minute. Also, a handful of uh, those, especially in the early scenarios, there's a couple of, like, foot tests that if you don't pass, they're really bad times. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it carries over for a very long time as well. Yeah, yeah, sometimes they just kill Jake Williams, but not always. Yeah. And that's, poor, like, best case scenario. Poor Jake. <laughs> but, I mean, if he didn't suck, maybe we would care about him more. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. Man, got... the deck with three body slots in it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who wants to take these ones? Brand, you want to take these ones? All right, so we've got our relics here that we're allowed to play. We get to play all, any off-color relic as long as it's not five experience. Uh, this one, we got the Chthonian Stone. Uh, it does take up a hand slot, which is like fairly competitive in this deck. But also, you get to seal one of the icon tokens, and some of those can be really bad. Yeah. Uh, you just uh, you just get to pay three and kind of ignore it That's, yeah for some of them yeah. especially the tombstone the squid it's not uncommon for the only be like one maybe two copies of that in the bag mm -hmm. and they usually have very harsh effects and if you can just get those out of there it's, it's good it's good times as a side note can we talk about how big chthonian stone looks in the art and how it only takes one hand <laughs> to hold it's just in the river yeah. justin it's yeah <laughs> it looks ginormous it's like that size of a cell phone 
It even is called a Stygian waymark. Like, who put a <laughs> tiny little stone on a thing to guide people? Anyway. I don't know. Have you seen, like, our road signs? They're tiny. Yeah, but I'd still... I'd hate carrying around with one hand all day, especially when I have one strength. Well, that's why you bring your backpack. That is true. Yeah. But we'll get to Tooth of Etsley first, Bryn. Why don't talk about that one? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Tooth of Etsley gives us plus one brain and plus one foot while we are resolving an ability on a treachery card. Uh, so it puts us up to f- to four and five without any skill cards, which may- wow. it means that we're we're pretty comfortable at just passively defending ourselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes up the necklace slot, which is at level zero, not really that competitive. Uh, and as a reaction, after a, a, we pass a skill test on a treachery card, we just get to exhaust it and draw a card. That's sweet. It's pretty all right. Basically makes your unexpected courages into actual guts. Yeah. Wow. If that's what you're using them for. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I like about this deck is that all the ways for you to get your relics out of your deck and ready to play or in play, and backpack's one of them. Uh, mm-hmm. It lets you just search the top six cards for an mm-hmm. item or supply card, which are your relics, your um, magnifying glass, your emergency cache, your flashlight. All those things can go in your handy-dandy backpack. Of mm-hmm. note, as Travis was saying, there are a lot of body slots in this deck. But Yeah, if you're, if you're wearing the trench coat, you can't wear a backpack and vice versa. Well, yeah, it just looks awkward. Right. And what are you wearing a trench coat for if not to look cool? Exactly. Pretty much. Why are you wearing a trench coat in the jungle anyway? To yeah. not get hit bit by snakes. It's so. like camouflage patterned. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, backpack, uh, backpack's also good just because it lets you hold more cards that find cards and also hold cards without mm-hmm. them actually being in your hand. Yeah. It also means that if you spend your experience on relics, which like, if you're not doing that, why are you playing Ursula? Um, <laughs> it's easier to find the relics that you paid XP for and that's yeah. good. Yeah, that right. Good. Like the cards that you pay to put in your deck only do something if you find them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, trench coat gives you two extra meat damage and also gives you plus one during evasion attempts, yeah. so you evade at five without anything else. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. <laughs> Neither of those things are a bad thing. It's it's kind of yeah. like nice. Like Ursula, you can kind of be a very self sufficient clue getter if you are the clue getter for the mm-hmm. team. Yeah. Three money is like a little bit pricey, and this whole deck is like a little expensive, but you can usually find it with Dr. Milan. Yeah, yeah. He, he, can, he can find you a lot of funding to buy your relics. Yeah. Uh, speaking of also, someone who can help you fund your relics, <laughs> Brian, why don't you Dr. talk about Ellie, Dr. Ellie? Yeah, so uh, as a reaction effect, after we play Dr. Ellie, we get to search the top nine cards of our deck for a relic card and attach it to Dr. Ellie, then shuffle our deck. Uh, the relics that are, or the relic, I guess it's each relic, because you could technically have more than one. But the relics That's that are hard. attached to her, yeah, don't uh, they don't take up any of your slots, but they can't. But you still control them. That's sweet. So, you know, like you can wear the Tooth of Etsley, and then Doctor Ellie can get the friendship bracelet and wear the Tooth of Etsley as well. Mm-hmm. And then you just or get to we were saying that your hand slots are competitive. Yeah, yeah. She her, can, she'll hold the Chthonian Stone for you. Yeah, her holding the Chthonian Stone is like sweet. Like that's pretty nice. Yeah. Because she's pretty good at that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, shrewd analysis. So you're gonna be upgrading cards. Spoiler alert: We're gonna have some upgraded cards in here that are like untranslated, uh, whatever the other word is, unidentified. Um, and uh, this lets you randomly, when you upgrade them, instead of choosing randomly, get two, which is always, it's, it's, it's usually a good thing, if not all the time, unless you're looking for something specific. But in this one, we're also, definitely excited to spin the wheel. What'd you say, Travis? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is now, free. free. Yeah. And it doesn't count against your deck size either. It just sits there and you're like, I am shrewd. Yes. Bryn, what about Unearth the Ancients? This card is so bad. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You were so close to saying sick, and then you were like, oh, right. No, no, it's like... (laughs) Never in my life have I thought this card was good. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, you thought it was good enough Uh, when we put it in the deck. Yeah, yeah, that's just because it's extra perception, though. (laughs) Yeah, it commits for two book icons, and that's, like, mostly what you want it for. Uh, 
And what it actually does is uh, for one resource, you can investigate and choose a seeker asset in your hand and test book where book is its cost. If you succeed, you put it into play. If you fail, nothing happens. If that card is a relic, you get to draw a card. Uh, it turns out there really aren't that many seeker relics that you want to put into play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, the card, like the assets that are worth putting into play for one in a test, that test is actually kind of tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, in like, the early it, game, <laughs> in your like, Honor of the Ancient will probably be something that you want to, you'll eventually take out of this deck because, as Bryn is saying, yeah. exactly that. But like in the early game, even like you have Doctor Milan in play, right? And just testing five to three to put like a Tooth of Etsley or a Chthonian Stone, and then you get your resource the from this card back. Play is... because it's not a seeker asset. Oh, sorry, not Chthonian Stone. Sorry, Tooth of Etsley. Yeah. Um, or if yeah. you want to kill Doctor Milan Christopher and put Ellie into play, or even just like if you have a way to get like. It, it'll do enough for you yeah. in the early scenarios that you'll be like, okay, this is fine, but I can see what Bryn is saying about how it's not super Yeah, like, efficient. it's kind of not good. Uh, so, like, if you ignore... It's good if you ignore the text on the card. Mm -hmm. Like, two book icons, that's that's right. That's where we want to be. Uh, at, level, at level zero, that's pretty strong. Uh, also, we've got some weird possible upside that could happen yeah yeah but just assuming uh, it's gonna just yeah. be a perception yeah like we're, we're but we mostly want this for the two book icons mm -hmm. that's what we want a lot of people in our list videos ask for cards us to improve cards that don't see a lot of play i think this one should just lose the choose it should just be choose a relic asset in your hand they should have oh, just man. gone yeah, all in like even if you could just pick an asset in your hand yeah like maybe have it cost zero yeah yeah I mean, it, it's all that's going to happen is you're going to try to play something, and Azathoth is going to slap you anyway, so why yeah. is this even a problem? Like, why have all these hoops to jump through? Anyways, let's hop on over to True Understanding, which is a sweet card that's actually going to do more work than you think, um, because a lot of things are scenario cards. The only thing that aren't scenario cards... Uh, the test that uh, a skill test on a, an ability that print on a scenario card is like you can't fight or evade that won't trigger here but for example treachery cards or location effects or i think even effects on enemy cards like uh if uh, an, en an enemy has an action that requires a test true understanding it's like can anything that doesn't start in your deck yeah yeah or be yeah, a fight like or not yeah, like not one of the basic actions either. Yeah, yeah. So like it's uh it's it gives you um if you have your Toots of Edsley, this puts you up to five brain, which is really which is very comfortable. And if you succeed, you get a clue from your location and you're a seeker, so you're gonna be on locations with lots of clues. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Let's get to some upgrades. Who wants to take these ones? Travis, do you know these ones? <laughs> Yeah, I can talk about these ones, purple, and this other one's yellow. I played with it <laughs> once. Uh, so it's just good. Zamna's like a solid. It's a relic. These are both relics. Fancy that. Um, just good. Zamna is like just a nice way of. It's like an insurance policy that you pay into. And then when a spooky enemy shows up, you just get rid of. Uh, takes the necklace slot, which is competes with the two of Esli. This is another great thing that like Doctor Ellie can hold for you. Mm -hmm. Um, a little pricey at three money, but uh, not too bad experience wise too. And yeah, you just you play it and then you sit on it. And when an enemy comes up that you're not super confident, you can just run away from and it's gone. Yeah. Other card we got here is Grotesque Statue. This is probably like the most valuable four experience points and two resources you will ever spend. Uh, this card's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Again, something that Doctor Ellie can hold and find for you. Something you can pull out, keep in your backpack. Um. You play it, and then you just get to succeed some tests, which is something you're gonna. It's gonna come up again later, but like this is a one of the very good ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. This card is also excellent for Doctor Ellie to hold for you because when it is out of charges, you just discard it, and then she just soaks damage for you like a chump. Yeah, she just she dies. Just <laughs> dies. Yeah, and then you just like play a new ally, like whatever. Your deck has five of them. Yeah. Um. 
Before we move on to the experience cards from the Forgotten Age, I also just want to do a quick shout out to, uh, it's Relic Hunter, correct? Yeah. 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 From So that's from the Devil's Legacy. Carrera. Even Charisma. Yeah, they're permanent cards that uh, you can easily proxy just by writing Charisma or Relic Hunter on a piece of paper and being like, look at me, I'm pretty. Or look at me, I grab items. I got grabby little hands. Uh, so that's <laughs> something you should look at as well if you do not have access to those. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, they're fairly strong in Ursula. Let's hop on over to the Her Cycle experience cards. Ancient Stone. I'm going to pass this ball to one of you guys to take because I think I've played with this card once or twice and I still don't remember it. I'll, I'll do this one, Brandon. You can do this. Yeah, you green, got it. Gross green card at the end. <laughs> uh, so Ancient Stone is untranslated. I think it's the only untranslated thing that you have to pay experience to like get initially. Yeah. No, it's, it's then, the only one that's not level zero. Yeah. Uh, you play it and you do an investigation and you have to succeed by a lot. So the, don't be afraid to dump like both your perceptions and both your unearthly agents or whatever, anything you can do to make this uh, one test succeed by as much as possible because it's a future investment. I think this one is uh, this one cares about the difficulty of the test, doesn't it? Yeah, it's. Uh, oh, OK, no, you just have to pass it, but you want the test to be as hard as it can be. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Which is like a similar. Uh, it is a said, very it similar. Is kind concept. of the same. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be afraid to like go to a seven shroud location with zero clues on it, <laughs> and try to pass that ten t difficulty test or whatever, because <laughs> that's how many times you get to use the upgrade versions. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's two of them. They both do thing. I believe they both do things when you draw cards. Yes. Um, they have X secrets on them, which again is X is the amount that you succeeded. It's or the, the difficulty of the, the test, test that, you yeah, that you succeeded. Yeah, I promise I know how these cards work. <laughs> uh, one of them heals horror from people at your location when you draw any number of cards. And that's, uh... It's, like, pretty okay. It's nice but to the call other one, the unknown, right? Like, you can then just, yeah, like, like, not worry about it, really. Yeah, It's handy, but the other one deals damage. Oh, boy. Yellow uh, dealing damage? What? Yellow testless, act, potentially actionless damage. Uh, that's where you. That's where the real money is on this one. Yeah. Um, yeah you can like make that. your goon feel like a, a chip for playing blue or whatever. Yeah. When you just Play get clues the and then also better. kill things. But, <laughs> like, this one's pretty strong. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. And you would just roll with shrewd, right? Because you get. You have it. Yeah, unless, like, I needed... Unless I was planning to be, like, I'm going to upgrade the ancient oh, yeah. stone to deal with enemies. Like, as a, a general thing for my group, uh, I'd be fine rolling it. Yeah. I, um, I always roll with shrewd analysis. Free experience is free experience, baby. Uh, so yeah, the only time I think I green, didn't... That's a very green thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Spin the wheel, Jack. I'm going all in. Um, yeah, I don't remember if I rolled this one or not when I played uh, Mandy. Because I, I did a lot of things with that deck. Uh, one thing to note as well is that even though it's four printed experience, you're upgrading from your ancient stone, so it actually only costs you three to go from this, from the unidentified to an identified version. You're right. I never realized that, but you're right. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure I paid four experience for these every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bryn, why don't you talk about you the, the skeleton Skelly key. Man key? This card is pretty relic. sick. Yeah, it is. It is a relic. It uh, is exceptional, which means that it doesn't actually cost two. It costs four, and you can only have one in your deck. But it is also fast to play, and as an action, you can attach it to a lo to your location, not any location. It has to be yours. Uh, that location shroud is one. Just like one, you know. Like that, your goon oh, can't get clues. Just kidding. He can. So Anybody can. Also, as well, if you're like, hey, I should use uh, yeah. Ancient Stone <laughs> to make a really a hard location one. No, even that plus three, it's always one. Then you get one secret yeah. on it. So don't do that. That's not a combo. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it, is, it is not. Yeah. Uh, it's also and then as, as uh, you can you can activate it again while it's attached to, an, to a location to pick it up again. So you can just carry it around with you and be like, tough locations are, in fact, not. Yeah. And uh, 
It also doesn't take up a hand, uh, any slots. It's just yeah. a, a relic that you put in your pocket. Yeah, this is a really good one for Dr. Ellie to find as well, because once you've attached it to a location and picked it up again, it's no longer attached to her. Yeah, Ellie's so if, she, if she dies, she dies. Ellie's hoping you find the friend friendship bracelet so she, like, yeah. stays around. <laughs> All right, we got a... Oh, Bryn, your favorite. Oh, man. The Podoctic Manuscripts is sick. No. Uh, the P is silent. Sure, that's what you say. It's, it is. Sorry, uh, Panoptic Manuscript. Sorry, Travis. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this one uh, it gives you three secrets, and as a reaction effect, when an investigator at your location attempts a test on a treachery card during the Mythos phase you can remove a secret to just not draw a token for the test. So you can pass, like, anything. Mm -hmm. No problem. Like, you got you got Finn Edwards on your team? He's trying, to, he's trying to do something with his one brain? You can probably make that happen. Yeah. Uh, and then, as an action, you can spend one of its secrets to choose an investigator at your location, and for their next test, they don't draw a token. Yeah. So, like, you can kind of just pick three tests and be like, all right, boys, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. there's a few ways. So Truth or Fiction is actually not an experienced card, but it's a way yeah. if you want to get more use out of your Ancient Stone or your Narcotic Manuscripts, you can. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to be playing it. Unless, the reason it's not in the deck proper is because you do not want to be playing it unless you're following that upgrade path. Yeah, definitely. And this would be a good one. Uh, to If you do want to do that upgrade path, you know you're going to do that. Just uh, replace Unearth the Ancients with Truth from Fiction. Oh, yeah. No, it's, like, actually functionally almost identical. Yeah. Um, yep. Ornate Bow is a relic and lets Ursula Downs attack with her <laughs> feet. That's pretty good. Yeah. Another way to make your, make your blue character look like a chimp. Uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're like, I pick blue. Why are you fighting things? And you're like... Because I can. Because I I'm yellow. <laughs> yeah, like whatever. Uh, Doctor Ellie can hold this and shoot things for it with yeah. you. Like yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Ellie would also be happy to find this one because that that's a pretty yeah. good stick around yeah. type of thing. <laughs> yeah, she's pretty sure you're not just gonna kill her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another one is Crystalline Elder Sign. This will bump up all of your stats. For uh, you'll become a four five two five. That's pretty crazy. There is a downside where you have to seal either the plus one or the elder sign. Uh, I recommend choosing the plus one. If you are playing and you are hoping to draw the plus one to pass a test, you are not playing well. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, like it does, it does make the bag a little harder. Yeah. But uh, and, still, yeah, like, like Justin said, if you're testing down, down one because the plus one could pass, don't, don't do that, don't, don't do, do that. that. Um, Travis also brings up a good point in his write-up for this card that if you're playing with a lot of people, you might want to consider yeah. the cause that that will bring to other people because you taking the plus one out essentially you make up for it by having plus one in all your stats. Yeah. Like it turns that plus one shit into your thing, but the other players do not get that benefit. But this I mean, is true. It's just one of those things to consider. Be like, hey, would you like even yeah. just ask, hey, are you cool if I just like take the plus one out and then they say no and you're like well fine i'm gonna do it anyway also if you're playing on difficulties harder than standard probably don't play this card mm -hmm. there might not be a plus one in the bag oh what a twist so Spooky. yeah like you might have to seal the seal the blue token and that's probably not worth plus one to all your stats but this card's also a great subtle griefing card when you just choose the <laughs> elder sign yeah <laughs> Well, that's a little less than subtle, but... Yeah. Uh, that's it. That's Ursula Downs. Any other thoughts? She's um, probably one of the more fair yellow characters. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like, she, she's not... She's actually probably one of the worst yellow characters in the game, but that being said, she's, like, still pretty good. Yeah, her stat line is just... Like, it doesn't joke around. Yeah, yeah like, you, yeah. Can, you can handle yourself, like actually just all the time mm -hmm. it's it's not uh it's not a huge problem uh yeah she's great for solo though and, yeah you've uh, got uh you've got some incredible action compression just on your investigator card yeah yeah she's, you she's get to good play with uh, you get to play with cool relics i think she's also pretty good for new players as well if you give mm -hmm. them her as a yellow 
it's not too overly complicated as someone like Mandy would be, for example. Um, yep. And it teaches them that action compression is a good thing in a game like this, and it's what will help you win more. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for watching, yeah. everybody. Uh, we have the list here. Uh, we'll be back next Saturday for all the people we're still missing. Spoiler alert, there it is. <laughs> See who's next? I already crossed them out. See you guys next week. Bye.